The Islanders are red hot to start the season and currently sit second in the Mets standings. So let's talk about it. To help us talk all things Owls is New York Post beat writer Ethan Sears. Ethan, ah, last night was a great one. I mean, they stunned the Rangers with a three-goal comeback in the third period. They also had comeback wins over the Flames and defending champ Colorado Avalanche. After winning seven of their last eight, what kind of tone is this team setting for the rest of the season? Well, Brandon, uh, first of all, thanks so much for having me. And um, it's it's showing that uh, last year was might have been an, an anomaly. And the group's success in the two years prior to that uh, maybe that can actually translate into this year. The Islanders, they didn't make a lot of moves this offseason because that was their sort of thesis. They thought that last year happened because they had a long road trip, because they had a COVID outbreak at the wrong time, and that the roster was good enough to compete. And right now, uh, it looks like they're right. Like you said, they won seven of the last eight. They're two points off the Devils at the top of the Metropolitan Division. They're beating good teams, teams that were in the playoffs last year. And they look like they can get back to the playoffs if they keep playing like this. All right. But prior to this season, Lane Lambert. Let's talk about Lane Lambert. He wasn't a huge name. But now, I mean, the first year of coaches, he's got this team rolling. So what's the feeling about Laner in the Islanders locker room? Well, they've all worked with Lane for a pretty long time. He was Barry Trotz's top assistant coach for all four years that Barry was here. And uh, I talked to Matt Martin a little bit after the game last night, and he told me that uh, Lane probably deserved a head coaching job a long time ago. He actually, he interviewed for a couple of them and just didn't get them. Um, so they feel like it was a bit of a stroke of luck that Lane struck, that Lane stuck around long enough to get this job. And uh, and he was ready for it. He had a lot of say in in-game adjustments when Barry was the coach. He has a rapport with this group. And so far, obviously, you see the record. It's working pretty well. Yeah, they've been aggressive with the four check and the penalty kill. He's just come in and he's made changes and it's all been working. But let's talk about the future. Now they take on the Coyotes and the Blue Jackets at home. What do we look for in these matchups? Well, these are two really winnable games for the Islanders. Uh, Arizona, they're just starting a 14 game road trip and they've been more competitive than maybe people expected to start the year. But uh, they're still generally expected to be towards the bottom of the league. Um, they're sort of tanking for, for, for a number one pick right now. Uh, Columbus is absolutely reeling. They're three, nine and oh, they just got blown out twice, uh, by the avalanche in, uh, over in Finland. Um, so those are two games that, you know, at least on paper, the Islanders probably should win. Um, and if they're able to do that, then they'll take a four game winning streak, uh, into, into a road trip next week. Win the games you're supposed to win and stay hot. Ethan Sears. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, Brandon.